A very good morning, welcome. It's Jeff Lawton on Monday the 4th of March, only a week to go to Cheltenham and I can't absolutely wait for, for that. Um, if you have just dropped on the channel, thanks for stopping by. Uh, it's not a tipping service, it is more an educational line where I'm trying to teach you how to bet to uh, maximise your profits. So what the first thing is, as uh, regular people know, is that we've got to find the right races to bet in. And I've got three today for you. Uh, I think they'll all win. Uh, unfortunately, they've all been backed. Uh, but from next week, anybody that wants, well, from this week, if you want to subscribe, you'll get the prices or you'll get the bets at 8.30 in the morning. Um, drop me a line at the email below, jefflawtonmanagement at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to subscribe or if you want to know anything, if you want to ask me anything on racing, I'll answer it honestly and as quickly a, a, as I can. Um, as I say, I'm going to finish this line on Friday. I'm going to take a break. Whether I come back or not, I don't know. Uh, if you press the subscribe button just below as well, uh, when I do come back or if I come back, you will be notified and you'll get a message so you can come back and watch. But if you do want to continue with me to join my private service, which means all the bets will go out at 8.30, I'll also grade the bets. I won't be uh, sort of, uh, I'm a little bit vague on here, I suppose, at times, but I won't be vague on the, on the line. I will tell you exactly what I'm backing and to what strength. So let's get into today. Um, three races I want to look at today. I start, in fact, they're all at Subtle. Uh, start with the 205, Super Styling. Now, this is low grade stuff, but this former Irish uh, point to point winner seemed to make a mockery of his opening mark of 85 when he won at Lingfield in November on his chase debut. Um, that was his first uh, time over, over fences in this country, certainly. Uh, obviously, he won the point-to-point -point in Ireland. Now, he settled well off the pace, but his mid-race move, when he moved effortless, effortlessly from the rear to join the leaders, uh, looked quite impressive. And he seemed to win with a fair bit in hand. Now, a £6 rise looks more than fair. Uh, Sean Bowen keeps the ride, which is good. And this actually looks a worse race than the one he won at Lingfield. The 95 days he's had off is a slight concern, but I would have thought he'd be more than good enough to, to go and win this. Going to the 340, and I'm interested in Rickety Bridge. Uh, he was very impressive when he won his only uh, point over three miles. That was in in UK uh, in March. Two mile looked on the sharp side when he finished fast on his bumper debut, and he failed by only a short head to, to get up in second. He was then thought good enough to warrant uh, his place in a listed bumper at Cheltenham. Uh, and he finished fourth where the second, third, fifth and eleventh have all now won since. So the form is rock solid. He was a little bit disappointed on his first start at Wincanton. Uh, sorry, on his last start at Wincanton. Uh, but he gets two and a half miles over hurdles for his hurdles debut which is a lot more realistic for a three-mile uh, point winner. His long draw to beat, for sure. Uh, that's not going to be an easy nut to crack, but that one ran well on de debut when he was third behind another uh, Paul Nichols horse called Centara. So Paul should know where he is with long draw, and I do expect Rickety Bridge to make a winning hurdles debut. In the 440 at Southall, <coughs> I quite like Samuzel. Now, he cost 110000 and he won a bumper on his second start, but his first three runs over hurdles were rather disappointing. However, his last run offered promise, I thought. Uh, he was settled last in a much, much better race than this, and he really caught the eye when he stayed on up the straight into fifth. As I say, it was a very warm race. The first, third, and fourth all won next time. But not only that, they recorded some huge figures, which would be far better than anything that's, that's ever run in this race. Um, I also didn't think he was particularly put in the race that day. He went off 50 to 1, so I'm not thinking they, they thought they were going to get close. So he basically had a total round, and uh, I think today would be a different proposition. Uh, he's since had a breathing operation, uh, which if he finds anything from, from that... He looks thrown in off a marker 98. And Ben Pauling, <coughs> now he's, he's in flame form. His last seven runners, uh, he's had three winners, sorry, last eight runners, he's had three winners, 
two seconds and a third from eight runners the other one was 28 to one so that was hardly expected to to do anything um, and i like his quote that he says in his trainer file in the racing post he said about this horse um i've always adored this horse and he's a name to remember for novice hurdling now i think he he would have thought it would have been going off a much higher mark than 98 so if the breathing up ben paulin's form and the run at newbury are to be taken into consideration then i think this should be an absolute good thing today so that's it for today remember to drop me a line if you want to get involved in the private service or you want to just simply ask me a question uh, go to the email below jeff at gmail.com and if you want to subscribe for when I come back, then uh, you can do that by hitting the subscribe button. All right, many thanks. I'll speak to you tomorrow. Thank you.